Hey everyone, welcome to another Whip Wednesday. This is a pretty late one because yeah. we did push the stream back by an hour and uh, ten an minutes. An hour and ten minutes. It's ten ten. It's a nice, <laughs> totally, totally yeah, planned. We planned. Yeah, it that way. But no, um, hey guys, welcome to another Whip Wednesday. But um, if you were here last week, you will know that we mentioned that we're going to be going on vacation this next week. So we've been so busy we've been busy very busy. very busy trying to prepare. And I've been trying to work on um, a couple of whips that I guess I have to finish before <laughs> before I leave. So I've been um, I've been up since what um, seven or something. Okay, why am I looking at that? Let me minimize that. Right. Oh wait, no, I don't want to minimize it. I just want it to be in the background. What's going on? What am I doing? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a little bit tired. As seven. I said, I've been up since seven, working just working pretty on. Non-stop. Yeah, pretty much nonstop. Um, so I've actually not really gotten much done since the last week, or not many things done since the last time that I talked to you guys. But I've worked a lot on a couple of things, and that's what we're going to be looking at yeah. today i have a bunch of it behind me so we'll start with the the first got a lot done. kind of i guess uh, yes and no yes. so here's this random piece of paper which is um i've been working on some as you may be able to tell from the title of the stream some some sewing projects and this is the bodice pattern that i have come up with for myself which way is the camera which what is left and right so this is the back piece of my bodice pattern and this is the front piece of the pattern and um i just got through mostly testing the whole thing and um i'll show you guys my test that i've been working on pretty much all day today i won't bother showing you guys a closer view because it's just i don't know Gold marks and stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, I've been prototyping the pattern. This is the skirt that goes with it, but this is the bodice that I've been prototyping. And it's mostly sewn together. I'm working on the placket right now, which is this back section here. And, um, I don't really like doing buttons or zippers or anything like that, so I'm just going to sew a bunch of buttonholes probably and put some lace up on there i'm not sure what i'm going to use as a lace up tie because i don't know the aesthetic of this isn't very like i don't know it being lace up kind of there's a limited like style of lace up that i could do with this right. with this some um, color scheme and mm -hmm. aesthetic oh god i'm gonna sneeze so i'm gonna turn the mic off for just a second guys I think we scared it away. Never mind. Okay, so... <laughs> Must have scared it off. Anyway, um... Oh, uh, that sneeze is still in there, but it's not happening right now, so we're just gonna have to press on. Right. With all the fur uh, furious sewing and fiber work, there's just like... Yeah, we seriously need to vacuum, you guys. <laughs> there's a lot of fiber just ambient right now. So, um... I could try this thing on for you guys, but there's not really much that I can show you because I am, in fact, wearing other clothes. <laughs> so, it do as you can see, it fits my body. <laughs> and it fits pretty well. I have a really, really high neckline on this, which I might lower for other things. Because right. I actually did... Um, I put a really high neckline at the front and a really plunging neckline at the back. So, it's a bit of a weird design. So, um, it would be good for... Um, for when I'm making just a base pattern to just keep, it would be good to maybe lower the neckline just a little bit and height and heighten the neckline at the back so that it just is like a basic right. design. But this I gave an intentionally high neckline because I just really like the way that it goes um, against my it the way that it lays against my collarbones. And um, and yeah, and this took quite a long time to get all of the darts exactly right but it does fit me pretty well now so um and this is a pattern that i've made before but it was kind of a little bit funky in the dart design before right and um so i've updated that and now i have a much better fitting bodice that took a good long time for me to actually get right because just the way that darts 
work, it's a lot tougher to do on a larger bust. So right. there's pins in this. I should have been a little bit more careful, but I didn't <laughs> stab myself, so it's all okay. You were lucky this time. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I'm tired. <laughs> So, um, that's been a thing that's been happening. And I also have a circle skirt that I've been making for this. And this is a really interesting piece that's, like, somewhat exciting for me. Because it's, like, a full-length, full-circle skirt. It actually, like... Yeah, we got this huge piece of fabric. Or what? This was, like, meant for it was a, a sheet. bed sheet. It was a yeah, bed no, sheet. no, that's yeah. right. It was a bed sheet. Yeah, okay. that's one of the reasons why I felt a little I less bad about it um, using it as... I felt a little less bad about using it as a um, as a rough draft like sample uh -huh. like example testing the pattern piece just because it was a bed sheet rather right. than like an expensive cut of fabric or a really nice piece of fabric that I could never. Well, I mean, I guess it is a nice piece of fabric that I'm probably not going to be able to find again. But it was a really large piece of fabric, and it's just a bed sheet. So I mean, there's probably tons of other like floral bed sheets that you could just find at the thrift store. This was from a rummage sale, I believe. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, this is actually it's a full-length skirt for me. Do print. So, um, Do print. Yeah, it looks it looks a lot nicer than I would have expected for a bed sheet. Like I think that it being like a lot more like faded because it's a vintage piece, it makes right. it look a lot less like a bed sheet. I think. True. Because it's like more washed out. Where I think that a lot more bed sheets would have like almost like too bright of color, like when they're right out of the packaging, maybe right. potentially. But I don't know. I think that it having that washed out color gives it a nicer aesthetic. It's so washed out that it was, was kind of difficult for me to tell the difference between the front and the back of the of the fabric. So I might have actually okay. switched it around in a couple of spots unintentionally. And that's un that's unfortunate, but it happens, especially with something like this where the back and front are pretty much exactly the same. I don't think it matters that much. Again, this is a rough draft piece, and I'm probably going to end up just kind of essentially covering it up with things like ruffles and lace and stuff like that just right. to kind of experiment with that. There's a lot of fabric that I have left over from this, so I can kind of like add a ton to this. I think nice. eventually I will add some sleeves to it, but I am a little bit afraid of sleeves, so for now I'm going to leave it without the sleeves. But I think it would be cool to try to do an experiment with some like puff some puffed sleeves or something. Right, that'd be cool. Yeah, just to see if I can do it. And um, this is currently summer, so at the moment sleeves aren't really necessarily something that I want. Right. But maybe in the future they you would be something that I just wait a little while until it starts to get cold, and then I throw some sleeves on. Yeah, exactly. And then I can <laughs> test my sleeves method. So there's that. And here's a couple of nice. other pieces that I have been working next, on today. Next fabric print. <laughs> so these are um, these are the ones that I pretty much have finished, but not quite quite. It's a pair of leggings, pajamas, whatever you want to <laughs> call it. It actually came out a lot more like a pair of of pajamas than leggings, which I I wanted to make a pair of leggings, but I guess I thought that this material because it said that it was like a stretchy mm -hmm. material, I just assumed that it was going to be like. A, a four-way yeah, stretch, four stretch material, but it was actually just a two-way stretch knit material. I think this one I got online, and that's probably why. Right. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Um, so the only thing that I really have to do to finish this is to sew down the other side of the elastic because it keeps flipping upward like this when I wear it, and that's just not pleasant. So I'm just going to stitch down the other side of the elastic to just keep it from doing that, I guess. Although it'll make the hem look a lot less nice, but you know, it'll be less annoying. Maybe I can hand stitch it or something and just do it like with some like what do you call it, prick stitches so that they don't I hope we don't get demonetized for that word. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, maybe I could try doing that so that it doesn't show as much on the outside of the material. Maybe even using a different thread color. I actually unpicked this. I sent you a picture of this earlier. Yeah. But I actually unpicked it twice <laughs> after I sent that to you just because um, the waistband, I wore it for a little while, uh -huh. and it turned out the waistband wasn't quite tight enough. So oh, okay. I actually unpicked the whole thing, and then right. I started to sew it back on, and then I realized that the second time I did it, I accidentally did it backwards, and I sewed the waistband onto the back instead of the front. So I unpicked it again. Aww. 
<laughs> and then I did it the third time, very nice and the correct. Third time, so it's third safe. time's the charm. Nice. And these really need to be washed because I've just stretched them out a bunch ever just because of putting them on and taking yeah, them off. And totally. Putting them on. Just like through they've the process kind of, of fitting them, they've gotten a lot, of wear, gotten a lot in... of wear. Yeah. So I need to wash these and then see what the final fit actually is. I think the final fit will be kind of better than how they fit at the moment just because they've gotten a lot looser from me trying right. them on over and over again. So they'll probably Shrink fit them up way nicer bit. once they've shrunk. In theory. I did kind of uh, pin them and sew them up a little bit in a couple of spots today just because they were really, really loose in a couple of places. But um, hopefully that didn't affect the fit too much when it shrinks. Down <laughs> where, in the is the, pile. where is the pile that I... I don't want to throw this just anywhere. It has to go in the correct yeah, pile on the floor. It's thrown in the right spot. <laughs> Um, so using the same material, I've been working on a dress, and um, this one is pretty much done. I haven't hemmed the bottom, and it looks pretty cute. It's kind of nice. You might be able to tell, though, that this um, top is gigantic. It ended up being off the shoulders because I didn't have enough faith in my pattern, and I chopped a big chunk out of it before I sewed it, and this was not a good strategy. This was not a good plan. I should definitely not have done that. <laughs> If I had not done that, it would have been perfectly fine. But I was like, no, the neckline is too high. And then I chopped a bunch out, and then it ended up like this. Right. So that's why you test the pattern before you, <laughs> before you decide, you this chop. is not good enough, we must chop a piece out of it. But it still works. It's still cute. I'm not sure if I want it to be off the shoulders. Like, it's cute off the shoulders, but... It's, I don't know if that's what I wanted. So I might actually like shear the top right. just to give it like a little bit like of a ruffle and then it'll be stretchy at the top, which will be kind of trippy. So I think that might be something to do with this. Yeah. If I had some thinner elastic, I would just elasticate the top. But the, the only elastic I have right now is super thick. Although maybe that would be worth actually trekking out to Joanne's for because I kind of have a couple of things that would be nice to use some thinner elastic for, and I just completely forgot to get it when we went to get elastic the other day because I've just been a lot of stuff on my mind. So, <laughs> so there's that one. We haven't had to use the small camera yet because all of this stuff is so big. Yeah, right. Most of this is larger stuff. Let me move this pattern. So before I go into the one crochet thing that I've been working on a ton, I'm going to show you guys my fabrics that I'm going to be working on now that I've mostly tested my materials and I'm going to um and I'm going to actually start using my good fabrics. Although these aren't actually the ones that I'm going to be using the bodice that I tested for. I'm going to use that for something else which is potentially over there somewhere. But, um, so that circle skirt that I tested, I'm going to use for this space print. I showed it to you guys last time. This, I think, is worth showing you guys closer up because it's a lovely print. Yeah, no, this just looks cool. Yeah, it's, um, definitely one of my favorite. Ooh, that looks really nice. It's definitely one yeah. of my favorite fabrics here. Let's, let's go for a minute so you guys can appreciate the, the uh. fabric really, really nicely. That might be nice to put at the end card, actually. Let's, let's try to make a point of doing right, that right so um put a pin in that <laughs> so um so this is a galaxy print that i got from joann's so i'm going to essentially make a giant circle skirt out of this theoretically this one's not going to be full length i don't think because i don't think i have enough material for that right. i'm going to try to get it as long <laughs> as i can but i don't know if i'll be able to get it full length we will see and I'll show you guys that in a couple weeks. Because also, by the way, we are off next week. Yeah. Just so you guys know. Next week being the first Wednesday of the month. Why did I click on that? I meant to click on that. To there, we're back. appreciate okay. the fabric some more. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I'm probably just going to make a big <clears throat> flowy circle skirt out of this. And nice. also let me grab um, a little... Our little things that we got from Joann's. I got this um, super thick waistband here 
from Joann's. This is a three inch waistband. So essentially I'm going to try to cheat a little bit and just make the skirt like with as few seams as I can. This material isn't very wide, so I'm probably going to have to do it in two panels, which is kind of fine because I kind of want to add side seam pockets. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me. So that is um, okay. But if I use this elastic waistband instead of making a waistband casing, it'll make it look a lot neater and cleaner at the top and I won't have to hem as much and that's always nice. So that'll that's something I'm looking forward to. And there's two nice. yards of this, so I should be able to make a couple of waistbands out of yeah, this. Yeah, right. No. But no. I'm definitely going to use this for my space dress because I think that the or space skirt because I think that it goes best with the um the dark colors of the galaxy print. And then something else that I got here, let me just show it to you, is I got this uh, overall buckle set because I'm going to use my other print that I'm going to show you right now to make um, a pinafore. Um, I'm not sure if there's like any other term for that. It's just a, it's like an overalls with a skirt at the bottom yeah, instead of pants, instead of essentially. Yeah. So I'm going to use this material here. This is my, um, I have... Uh, I have this cactus print that I got from a... Was this from a rummage sale as well? I, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I this think this was from a that, random rummage sale. That same rummage sale. Yeah, we also got pie from that rummage sale, and that was also a good buy. Very good buy. So um, let me show you guys this one closer up. I'll just throw it on top here. There we go. <laughs> nice. So you get a nice view of this one cactus here. And you can actually see that it is a cactus. Look at the little spines. It's adorable. <laughs> but um, I think that this um, this gigantic floral print like has a really nice, like I don't know, like tropical kind of feel to it. Yeah, totally. I guess. There's a lot of flowers on here. It's kind of hard mm -hmm. to tell, actually, that it's a cactus print unless you like really look at it. Yeah. It almost makes me think of like a Hawaiian shirt or something like yeah. that. But I think it would look really cute as like a romper or a pinafore or something like that that's kind of got like... I don't know, like a, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is, like an active, I guess, feel, like like it feels like you want to like go about in yeah. it, kind of. It's more active wear. It's less of, a, of... less of a formal dress type of thing, right. more of like a, just a going out and about kind of look, which um, a lot of the dresses that I try to make are more, I guess, versatile. Yeah. I try to make them so that they're not like, oh, you can only wear this formally, or you can only wear this like. Not, casually. not formally yeah <laughs> casually so um hopefully this will be more of just a casual type of look i guess yeah. um and i'm not sure if i'm going to make this one with a circle skirt this one i might actually make with a half circle skirt just because i don't have that much fabric to work mm -hmm. with here right so i want to make sure that i have enough fabric to be able to um to do as much of the skirt as possible and I think, I do believe, yes, it is. It is a omnidirectional print, so it doesn't really matter how I cut yeah, it no, out. There's so much going on, you could so freaking put I could it just put it however. however. Yeah, exactly. And there's like a lot of flowers that are kind of going in random directions, so it doesn't really matter. Like there's some here that are like completely upside down from this perspective. Yeah. So I mean, like. It doesn't really matter, probably which well, yeah, direction. Yeah, because the way the way to be able in. to tell is if the the cactuses, because those are like the largest pieces. Yeah, and so this one is on upside it. down. So, so I mean, clearly, are clearly, it's in whatever direction. Then it's yeah, then it's omnidirectional. I wonder what this material is made out of, though. It feels like a cotton muslin, but it might be poly. It might, it might be poly blend, or it might be rayon. I don't know if it's poly blend. It doesn't really feel like a poly blend. Maybe rayon. Who knows? Hopefully Who it's knows? cotton. I know. <laughs> but I, I mean, there, theoretically, if it's going to be a pinafore, though, it's going to be like an outer layer, so it won't be that much of a problem if it's like not made yeah. of a natural material. Hopefully it shouldn't irritate too much if it does happen to uh, be touching on the skin. And we're back in space. <gasps> in time. <laughs> So hopefully that will work. I've never used anything like this before, so um, so that'll, that'll be, be interesting. <laughs> I've seen a couple of tutorials that people have made. 
and it doesn't seem like it's that complicated. So the real problem is going to be making the straps, honestly, because mm. that's going to be hellish to like right. try to make. Hmm. I just got a thought for a way that I could maybe make them more simply. But, I mean, you know, who knows? Trial and error. We'll find out. Well, that's the thing, though, is I definitely don't want to waste my fabric. I know, right? Because so you only have so much. There's not really much room for error here. Right. I kind of have to not trial and error. I have to do the thing and not fail at it. No pressure, though. But <laughs> I'm going to... Go ahead and do the thing and not fail at it. Anyway, um, so that's all for our sewing stuff. Where is that one? Oh, there she is. So um, I didn't get as much work done on this doll as I would have liked because I kind of got carried away with doing the um, fabric stuff. My, my stuff is just falling just fallen off we're gonna <laughs> Sorry, put that guys. back Sorry about that um don't want to get demonetized but um so and also I got carried away not only with the fabric stuff but I also did my eyeball experiment so as you can see she's got some eyeballs they look very very eerie on the camera <laughs> she's staring Spooky. at you with her scary white dead eyes so it's a little terrifying yeah, it's okay She's getting life pumped into her. What? You're breathing life into her. I hope that didn't affect the the audio too badly. I apologize. I was not thinking about that. Some powerful, but no. I, ho Sorry. Ho hopefully not. I don't know. The microphone likes those kind of sounds. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So let me show you this scary face closer up. There she is. Jeez, that is terrifying. My goodness. How scary is that? Especially with the space background. She's like she's <laughs> like let's 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 There we go. Yeah. Let her stare me into too. your soul ah. for a moment. <laughs> But yeah, um, so I did a little bit more work sculpting um, the face a little bit. You can kind of see her little bare face starting to take shape. So that's promising. Um, you can definitely see the difference between the stitches and the yeah. sculpting that I've been oh. doing with the, um, with the embroidery, which bugs me a lot, and I would really like to figure out a way to... Um, to correct that while I'm actually making the doll so that I can just make the stitches inherently this shape but I haven't really perfected the way of like insetting the eyes and this was very much an experiment I really wasn't planning on doing this from the beginning if I had known that I was going to do that maybe I would have tried to make the face a different shape but that didn't end up happening so I ended up having to sculpt the face on top of the eyes with um the way that I did the eyes Right. So um, perhaps in future experiments, the eyes will be um, a little bit easier to inset because of the shape of the doll, hopefully. And I won't have to do as much sculpting. But because of the fact that this is going to be a fu uh, furry doll, it's going to be brushed out. So you won't be able to really see that as soon as it's been brushed. Mm -hmm. Like, it won't really show the yeah, difference between the um, texture of the stitches sort of and the texture of the of the sculpted part so i've mostly finished with that i just have to do a little tiny bit more stitching around the eyes and a little bit more filling in of certain spots of the face you can kind of see there's a couple of spots that are a little caved in here you can kind of see it more clearly on the camera than you can in real life, actually. <laughs> so this is actually quite helpful to me to see it this way and be and like, oh, that's fall. where all the shadows fall. Yeah. But you can also kind of see where her little bear nose and her little bear mouth is yeah. going to be, which is nice. It's, oh, very cute. it's starting to take shape. So she's pretty close to being done. And um, hopefully I can get this done by the time we get to where we're going because I want to be able to deliver this, but it's might not happen. <laughs> I might have to, to send it later, but we'll see. Hopefully I'll be able to finish this. The hard part is going to be her wig. 
but we'll see. <laughs> so many things to do. So um, that's the last thing that I have to show you guys. Oh, you know what? I didn't even show you 80% of what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I also worked on the body. The legs are done. You might also notice that I left this crevice here in between the legs open. Um, usually I seal that when I'm making the other leg. This time I didn't because I wanted to give this doll as much mobility as possible. So I actually left that open so that I can fill yeah. it in later and give it more, like, more material there, essentially. Yeah, totally. So that she has a little bit more uh, space that she can flex her legs yeah. open. Because I did want this doll to be extremely poseable. And I finished making her legs, and I gave her cute little bare feet <laughs> at the bottom of her feet. I tried to make the toes kind of shaped like little hearts. Yeah, no, you can definitely see the middle ones. Like, Actually, yeah, no, all of them, they do look like so little So let hearts. me show you the difference. See, this is what the stitches just look like when I made them, and that's what they look like when I've outlined them yeah. and kind of turned them look to look a little bit more like hearts. But, yeah, so this is um pre prior to sewing and stitching closed and i may have accidentally made these three stitches pink when i was not supposed to <laughs> because i am very sleepy but um these three are not supposed to be pink i might stitch over them with some embroidering just to kind of hide it's that a bald patch well i don't need that to be there i can easily hide that yeah. so i might hide that with some embroidery just because this is going to be a fluffed doll again right. so it won't so matter you won't really be able to see it yeah you won't be able to tell so um so yeah i'm going to sew this closed and then use the pink tail to embroider some more detail onto the little heart toes and then use the brown tail to kind of shape the leg and the foot a little bit more to kind of give it a more structured shape because you can kind of see this one has like a little bit more of like a boot shape here and this one's kind of a little bit more like awkward and lumpy so um <laughs> so this one has not been shaped yet i just wanted her to have a lot of like stability in her feet so that she right. can hold as many poses as possible i guess and i also made her arm which is kind of dangling here i was going to give her the same little bare feet on her hand on her arm but i just couldn't figure out a way to make the color changes work on that right, scale so totally. i am just going to have to sew that on after the fact mm -hmm. which is fine i can do that so she's pretty much done i just have to do the one last arm sew everything together and um detail and then yeah i I really should paint her eyes on because that would probably so she's not looking with a dead vacant expression. <laughs> probably would help a lot with her not looking terrifying. Um But yeah, I think she's shaping up really, really well. I can't wait to put on her cute little bear ears. Her wig is gonna be tough though. I'm gonna hopefully be able to get that done in a couple days, but I might not be able to get that done in Fingers a couple crossed. Days. Wish us luck. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Okay, so now that's the last thing <laughs> that yeah. we have to show for you guys. So um, thank you for joining us if you dropped in for this extremely late Whip Wednesday. Yeah, yeah um, sorry. sorry about that, guys. But thank you for everyone that did join us, though. Yeah, and we will be back um, in a couple weeks because next week, as we said, we'll be on vacation and we usually do we usually take, take off first Wednesday, first Wednesday off. of the month. So every other Wednesday besides the first Wednesday of the month, we should be um, here doing our stream, usually yeah. at 9, sometimes at 9.30 and very rarely at 10, depending on how what, what yeah. happens. Just keep your eyes peeled around that time. You know, yeah. Um, we're usually here. Yeah, or, and I've just been so busy. I haven't really been updating anything. I really need... I have, like, a, so many things that right. I have to... Uh, anyway. There's been a lot going on lately, so... But... So, um... Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks. And, um... That's it. <laughs> All bye right, guys. bye, you guys. <laughs>